Hi everyone, um, this video is to try and clear up a little bit of confusion. Um, I released this video a couple of days ago now uh, on the forum where we're talking about transformers and how to uh, calculate transformers and it came up that Floyd Sweet was an expert. Um, several times, several quotes I've brought up in the past um, and I sort of used the quotes to try and make some sense of uh, what Floyd Sweet was actually trying to do. Um, now I have changed the video title on this. Magnet conditioning was a hoax. Anyone that believes that magnet conditioning can be done then I'm fine with that but uh, what I'm trying to say is in all my work and all the work that I've done magnet conditioning was a hoax. Floyd Sweet was not a materials scientist. He was a transformer technician. He was very skilled at his job and that's what I'm trying to point out. Floyd Sweet was a transform transformer expert, an expert at transformers. He, he was nothing else but. Um, many, many years ago um, we did some work, self-assisted oscillation in a shorted coil and this is where I started learning my bits and pieces about how a coil can actually assist in a um, in a particular frequency. Now these are the two quotes that I was talking about and this is the reason that I've released the, um, the video. Uh, it's only just a short clip, it's a quote if you like. Um, I left the bit in there which probably was my mistake. Um, I left the bit in there about the magnet conditioning now the magnet conditioning is a hoax. If you believe it and you want to believe it, then that's up entirely up to you. Um, Floyd Sweet, he experiment, experimented with the magnets, he pulsed them, he did this and that and everything else. But at the end of the day, um, the magnet strength was of very, very good quality, and I can prove that. Um, and at the end of the day, the field itself from the magnets was not waving like was uh, said in the video. He found a way to trick this magnet into self-oscillation. Now let's reason together here. What do we mean? Here's the magnet sitting on the table, absolutely still, nobody's moving a thing. But the field, the magnetic field of the magnet is waving back and forth. And so you can take a shim stock, or if you're out of shim stock, a, a single edge razor blade, and put on this permanent magnet and, and with a little trouble you can get it to stand up in that field and you can get it to wave back and forth. And just turn it loose and it'll sit there on a properly conditioned sweet magnet. It'll sit there and wave just like now it's doing work all the time against the air. I want to point this out. This thing is doing work. So it's getting energy somewhere. We're not violating the conservation of energy law. It's the field that's vibrating and pushing that blade you see. I took one of those magnets with an oscillating blade on it and put it in the safe and locked it up for 24 hours with it waving. I put the key in my pocket and took it off. The next day, 24 hours later, I unlocked it and it was sitting in there and the blade was still waving. There's no way on God's green earth you can fake that. If you do, you got a trick you really can sell, I guarantee you. But there's no way to fake it. Well, you can see if the field is waving. If I put a coil around here, it's gonna, the field will cut the coil, and standard magnetic theory will tell me I'm going to have current in this coil, oscillating current. Okay, now, what people have to realize is Floyd Sweet's got two big coils underneath this magnet. This magnet, it is a resonant thing, so you have to actually drive the field to actually do this. Okay, and there is a specific frequency that you've got to tune to. Um, from memory, there's two or three uh, harmonics, if you want to call it that, subharmonics. Uh, there's about 13 hertz, about 24 hertz. I've been through this all on my website. Now, I, I, this is a warning to everybody. Uh, in my time over the years, I've spent the best part of possibly upwards of about $80,000 by the time I've purchased magnets, purchased equipment, purchased everything else to try and replicate magnet conditioning. Um, heating the magnets, as soon as you heat the magnets, they crack, they become impossible to work with. So the story of conditioning is completely a hoax. It's completely and utterly a hoax. If you want to waste your time or waste your money, 
um, then that's entirely up to you. What I am here to tell you that nothing was done to the magnets. Floyd Sweet picked a very, very good uniform magnet because the magnetic field of the magnet did make changes to the coil, but the magnetic field itself was not moving, not specifically and not by itself. Okay, now I've done a video where I actually show that in this video when, when Tom Bearden describes the conditioning and the, that the flux cuts the coil, uh, then Tom Bearden says, well, it's standard electromagnetic induction. Well, it's actually not. It's actually not. Because the simple reason is, you've got to remember, all of Floyd Sweet's coils were underneath the, the magnets. Okay? All the uniform flux cutting the magnet, uh, cutting the coils, no, it doesn't matter how much the flux was moving, if it was all moving, if, if 10 lines were moving, a million lines were moving, doesn't matter how much was moving, what would happen is the uh, EMF would be induced, so it would move up this way of the coil, it would move up this way of the coil, it would create a dead short, and zero EMF would be induced. Now I have, uh, I have made a video. Okay, hi everybody. Um, today I just want to show the, um, the flux on a permanent magnet, how the flux on the permanent magnet um, needs to be um, altered in some way uh, in the in the sense of the Floyd Sweet VTA to induce an EMF into a coil. <coughs> Here I have two um, 6 by 4 by half inch permanent magnets. Um, the field strength, um, I've got a north pole here and a south pole here so the flux is bent over like this. Um, now across the face of the magnet the flux is fairly uniform. Um, so what I want to show first of all is that if I move this coil across the face of the permanent magnet, even though there is a flux cutting and the coil was cutting the flux, being that the flux is uniform from the face of the permanent magnet, there's nearly no EMF um, induced in the coil. Basically what's happening is we've got an EMF going one way, on this side of the coil and we've got an EMF going the same way on this side of the coil so essentially it's a dead short. Now what happens if we move the coil over to here you can see we have an EMF induced in the coil on the scope basically because this side of the coil is seeing an EMF going this way and this side of the coil is seeing an EMF going this way. So essentially each side adds to the total EMF on the, on the output. So I think it's very important to show that the magnets in the Floyd Sweet VTA were altered if Floyd was using standard Faraday law theory. Um, it's fairly important to understand this quite important concept. Um, this concept is fairly well known in the magnetics industry, but it's not, not really written anywhere. This is something that's sort of not really hush-hush, but it's something that's not really, really well known. It doesn't matter how much the flux is moving on the magnet, you could have 10 million gauss all moving, all cutting the coil. And you know what? It wouldn't make a single difference because it has, to ha it has to be different. One side of the coil has to be different, cut differently than the other side of the coil. And I show in this, co in this experiment, this side of the magnet over here is an opposite pole to this side of the magnet over here the flux bends over and when I move the magnet, oh, sorry, when I move the coil over to cut each half, that's when we get an EMF. Okay. So I have a lot of evidence to say Floyd Sweet did not modify in any way the magnet's magnetic field. Um, another I will show you just quickly. Okay, here we go here. I could probably show you a better photo, but uh, this is just one of the ones I pulled up. Now, um, this is a very, very important um, image. The simple reason is um, you can see one magnet there on the VTA. You can see another magnet there on the VTA. And you can see Floyd's got them spaced. So he's got like an aluminium tube, if you like, um, between. So Floyd's got razor blades or shim stocks, Tom Bearden called them, in there. He's got shim stocks in there. Um, now, I've done this experiment a million times. If the magnets have uh, anything but 
um, a very very good quality magnetic field there's no way you can do this experiment as soon as the magnet has the magnetic field knocked around there's no way you can make these these shim stocks stand up here um, by themselves the way that they are okay you need a really 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 good quality magnetic field to be able to make these shim stocks stand by themselves up here okay here's a closer shot see he's even got a piece of paper in there okay and you can see if you watch the video very carefully the time that they do show the VTA and they, they show these razor blades in there that there's no movement on them whatsoever okay um, so the, the magnets themselves did not have and I'm, I'm I could say with a hundred percent confidence did not have a magnetic field that has been modified in any way what I can say with confidence is that Floyd Sweet wanted, needed, looked for a magnetic field that was completely uniform across the face of the magnetic, across the face of the magnet. Um, and all I'm going to say at this stage is that the magnet increased the pot potential that was available for the windings. Okay, it, it's got nothing to do with the magnetic field cutting the coils. Um, there's another piece of evidence that I want to show you real quick as well. Um, just bear with me a sec. Okay, this quote here, the VTA can be started by a momentary connection of a 9 volt battery to the drive coils when the machine is operated in the self-powered mode. Okay, the operation is stopped by momentary interruption of the power to the power coils. Okay, now logic would tell any normal person that if the magnetic field from the magnets was the primary cause of the output on the VTA and that the magnetic field because it was waving was the it was the reason or the source for the output there's no way the VTA could be started or stopped in such a way okay the magnets uh, waving across the coils would either induce an EMF or not induce an EMF and nothing to do with the um, nothing to do with the uh, connection and uh, switching on of an oscillator would make any difference. Now I should note as well, John Bedini has also admitted. Okay, this video is on my website, uh, on my YouTube channel. If you want to go and have a look, John Bedini's admitted that magnet conditioning was a hoax. So in in a couple of sessions when I ended up over at uh, Floyd's house. He had a very strange setup. He had uh, a round tube and that had house wire wrapped around it. And of course he had that to an amplifier and he would put this whole box actually he would just take a magnet off and he would hold it down inside this tube and of course as he turned the amplifier up the magnet would wobble inside the tube like that but I knew that that wasn't what he was claiming was the conditioning process because just taking this magnet and sticking it down in the tube isn't going to condition anything because it's going to stay permanent um, so he's another one that's t trying to tell everybody um, that it's a hoax. This one here, uh, Floyd Sweet, the everything is off. Okay, there's nothing running whatsoever on the VTA. Floyd Sweet reaches over, he's telling everybody he's going to switch on the VTA, he switches on the oscillator here, and then all of a sudden the VTA comes to life. Mr. Sweet will now turn on and energize the equipment, and we'll take you through another tour. Now turn the oscillator. Okay, we're now turning on the oscillator. This is video proof that the VTA was switched on. Okay, that the simple switching on of the oscillatory signal via the signal generator here was the primary cause for the VTA's output. Okay, it's like an electrical motor. You have to switch the electrical motor on to get the shaft to turn. It's the same, exact same deal. 
Okay, Floyd Sweet, he was a genius, and you know he was he was years and years ahead. Um, but it's the same technology as we're trying to share now. So you know what what we're doing now, I'm not as far ahead as what Floyd Sweet was. Five kilowatts is a lot of output for such a small device. Um, so he was way ahead, but uh, we're getting there. So um, look, I urge everybody. It's like the old saying from where is it any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic Arthur C. Clarke okay I don't believe in magic okay I, I believe in science and I believe in trying to understand things I believe in trying to make sense of things um, I, I just urge people not to make foolish expensive silly mistakes running off down rabbit holes that um, that other people create um, I am fairly firm in believing that Floyd Sweet started this rumour of mag magnet conditioning um, and I think Tom Bearden especially perpetuated the, the rumour um, and I think John Bedini just before he died was, um, was man enough to step forward and say it was a hoax because it, it was, it was a hoax and again if you do the experiment, a very simple experiment uh, if you run through where is it? run through this experiment you will see exactly why the magnet flux was not in self oscillation magnet conditioning as we were told by Floyd Sweet by Tom Bearden initially by John Bedini was a lie it's an absolute outright lie it's not true Okay, the VTA has to be switched on the VTA has to have a source of power to keep it going uh, in the later models where it was looped um, the power was furnished by the output coils themselves um, through various feedback systems okay so don't believe in something that is never going to get you anywhere okay question everything even question what I'm saying you saying to you um, because at the end of the day the most simple experiment will give you the most progress okay and an experiment like this can save you many 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 thousands of dollars and thousands of hours so I urge everyone um, please uh, please dismiss the magnet conditioning hoax now in saying what we're saying if we were to have one side of this coil here cut by the magnet then yes it would produce an EMF but to have both sides cut at the same time by the same um, uniformity, same polarity, is is it's futile. It doesn't work. Okay. So again, everybody, uh, I apologise. I may have confused people by releasing uh, this video. Uh, I have changed the name. Okay. So magnet conditioning is a hoax. Uh, please read the comments because I do actually go through magnet conditioning as a hoax um, I, I give good reasons, I give evidence for the reason that I'm saying what I'm saying so I urge everybody to look into it, I urge everybody to um, to think logically because if we if we sort of are off chasing fairy tales then we're never going to make any progress, we really aren't you know, there's too many people out there, if you go and read the other forums there's people off chasing all sorts of crazy, wild ideas that are just complete nonsense. Um, so please think logically. Um, nothing is magic. Everything has a um, everything has a, a scientific explanation, even if we don't know what it is just yet. Okay. Thank you. And uh, again, I just want to apologise if there's been any confusion.